Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining me for another episode of Plim, Plim Talks, where I'm hosting the lovely Elle Marie Wood for her book launch party for 12 hours, which is come out now. So we're a little late to the party, but always an excuse to party. So super excited to be hosting this. Thank you so much for joining me, Elle Marie Wood. Oh, I'm excited to be here. Thank you for doing this. Absolutely. This is so much fun. So uh, allow me to introduce you if that's all right. Sure. So uh, Elmarie Wood is an award-winning psychological horror author and screenwriter uh, who has been writing for over 30 years, starting young. She's the author of six novels, 150 short stories, seven feature-length screenplays, and several short screenplays. Uh, besides that, she's been published in print and online, newspapers, anthologies, chapbooks, magazines, and comic books. Her novel, The Promise Keeper, won the Golden Stake Award for Literature at the International Vampire Film and Arts Festival. And uh, apparently the trophy is actually st shaped like a steak, so that's very awesome. Um, also won the Best Horror Screenplay at the Nova International Film Festival, Best Afrofuturism Horror Screenplay sci-fi screenplay at Urban Media Makers Film Festival and Best Short Screenplay Indo Global International Film Festival. That's a lot. That's all a mouthful. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, you did well, her, though. I couldn't get through that other title. Thank you. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> her short story, The Ever After, was part of the Bram Stoker finalist anthology, Psycho Rex Daughters? Psycho Rex. You almost <laughs> had it. Almost <laughs> burned. <laughs> Um, as an act, uh, an active member of the Horror Writers Association and a mentor there as well, and a sometime interviewer, but only because she enjoys it with her friends and finding out what they do. But obviously, writing's your big thing. And congrats on twelve hours. Thank you so much. It's a fun Absolutely. story. Absolutely, and thank you for joining me. I always love hosting these parties, so it's always such fun. So let's dive into it then. <laughs> Also, I, oh, so oh, I was going to say, because I was reading it, I think I saw you point it at, but the stake is behind your head. It is. Amazing. And you also have the, you, ha you have the book. So this is part of the cover that I could get on the screen. Ooh, absolutely. the book's right there. A another beautiful cover by Lynn Hansen, I want to say. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Amazing. So um, why don't we, you know, start with the little interview first. Just so. First, I know I did the intro, really hefty qualifications, the awards, just super amazing, well-rounded resume. But can you tell us in your own words a little about your writing background and kind of your journey into the writing industry? Oh, that's that's a weighty question. Um, I know, that's see. why I asked it first. <laughs> um, I've been writing since I was like five. I mean, I've just really, I don't know where it came from. I have always enjoyed telling stories. I've always actually enjoyed telling psychological horror stories. I mean, I didn't know what to call it then, but that's what that's what it was. That's what it's kind of always been. So uh, I just kind of stuck with it. Um, I didn't start submitting, not actively submitting until the late nineties. And actually the first thing I published was a, a poem in a, it was like a little, um, small magazine coming out of Maryland and it was uh I can't, God, I can't go it was the 90s I can't tell you the name of it right now but it was it was poetry which is funny because I don't write poetry a whole heck of a lot I do every now and then still but not a whole heck of a lot but that's where I started and um decided that you know well I really I, I like the whole idea of seeing my name in print if you will and, and impacting people with something that I came up with out of my imagination and I just kind of hit the road from there. Um, my first novel was, wow, I want to say 2001, but 2003 feels more like right. So I'm going to say 2003. I'm not, I'm not sure. But 2003, it was long enough ago that it doesn't really matter if we try to put our finger on that. Um, that came out and I sort of went with that into the, the, the horror writers world, if you will. I mean, I hadn't necessarily been part of part of it in a major way outside of a couple short stories here and there and just being an avid fan of course but not necessarily from a submitting standpoint I wasn't necessarily you know a known entity when I came out with the novel so I came out saying hi I have this <laughs> please someone read it and they did it which was cool <laughs> so 
after that moment, I mean, which, like I said, really did begin in the late 90s, but really picked up steam in the early 2000s. I've just kind of been at it. And I, I'm, I'm sort of relentless at this point. I, I put I write a lot and I put out a lot and I'm just constantly trying to make mm -hmm. sure that, you know, people can at least see the stuff that's coming out of my mind and see if it works for them. What does your writing process look like? think it up and write it to be honest I literally I'm a pantser so for oh, nice people, me too team pantser <laughs> you know and what I've come to find out is that people who are not actively writing don't always know what pantsing or plotting means so I'll, I'll explain it here oh, because please it's, a, do, yeah. it's a weird term that sounds natural to me right and probably to you as well but a lot of people don't know what I'm talking about so as a pantser it literally comes from the phrase you know by the city of your pants so you know that means sort of doing something willy-nilly or without Pre, you know, previous thought. Um, often when you think of someone writing a novel or a short story or whatever, you think of them sitting and, you know, outlining it and you know, having all of these different, you know, ideas and thoughts and processes around the story creation. And, you know, I've talked to some plotters who put their work out on a, on index cards and, you know, we'll take the, take the different scenes and move them around on the floor or on a, a, a cork board or something to come up with their, their story. And it's part, that's part of their process, if you will. And so that when I come in and I'm just saying, Oh, you know, white piece of paper, clean, nothing on it. Let's write something. <laughs> that's literally what I'm doing. If I have an idea and I just kind of go for it. So while that sounds sort of, you know, loose, you know, random, it's not Organic. necessarily, what is that? Organic. Organic. Okay, that's a beautiful word, though. That's yeah, wonderful. See, that's go. a great a word pantser, to describe. That's how I always say it. It's organic. Go with it. I think I'm yeah. gonna take it. Let me use that as well because it's it's not as random as it sounds. You know, we something triggers a thought, and that could be anything. You know, we get our inspiration from all different places. So something triggers a thought, and if it triggers it and it makes me think about it, I say, well, let me see. You know, right, let's write something down real quick. That was kind of neat. And if I can get somewhere you know, from that point, then I can make a decision of whether or not this is something to pursue or something that was just a neat little idea. Um, but do I go into it with an outline? No, never. I, when I was in school, I had to do that. And, you know, yeah. it's very, I just, honestly, that was, it was horrible. The, the hardest part of school for me was having to outline my work. And I, because I just, I personally like to enjoy, I, rather to uh, explore the story and find out what's going to happen with the characters. You know, at the same time they're figuring out, so am I. And I'm typing away going, oh my gosh, that's cool. You know, <laughs> because I had not considered it beforehand. But that doesn't mean that I don't, as a pantser, have a, an end goal in mind. An end goal in, mind. in fact, I know the, the ending before I even begin the story. So it's like, oh, and this is what will happen at the end. And then I sit down and write the idea that I think that will work to get me to that end. Um, so again, the process in and of itself is a little bit backwards for me. And it's definitely, there's no way to put your finger on it. It's different every single time, except that something triggers a thought and I decide, well, let's write that out. And so did you to be encouraging oh. to any pantser out there who says, oh, I don't know. I can't well, do this team pantsers right here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, because it's a thing when we were coming, at least when I was coming up in school, like and I'm talking before going to college and, and trying to write in high school and junior high and things like that. They make they you do like the said, spider web thing. And yeah, stuff. I just oh, found the, it useless. Oh, totally. I mean, well, it took the joy out of writing for me. It took mm -hmm. the, the, the fun out of it. I mean, it just literally... It, it, we were told if you don't do it this way, you're not doing it correctly. You know, same with genres. I mean, and I don't know if that's something you want to dive into, but you know, the, when you're talking about cross genre and, and doing some work that mixes different pieces of the pie, that really wasn't allowed when I was in school. I and mean, the 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 argument would be, well, you're not necessarily ready to quote quote unquote ready to write if you can't figure out what genre your work is and it's just squarely this one thing and doesn't include any other elements. And that was, I don't know, maybe I just don't like being put in a box. That could be that, you know? So I really just, once I got out of school, I just decided I wasn't going to do it that way anymore because I didn't like it. And it, I've been, I, I write a lot <laughs> faster. I'm a lot more confident in my writing because I'm not outlining anything. I'm doing it the way that I do it. <laughs> so you didn't outline 12 hours at all. 
No, not at all. Oh, that's amazing. I think for me, for longer works, I've taken, although outlining to me is like, this should happen. And then eventually this should happen. And then maybe this. And so it's like a few bullet points. And I'm like, there, I outlined. I did a good job. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then I write down all my character names so I can remember them. Because <laughs> otherwise mm. I'm having to go back and be like, what was that person's name? Like... <laughs> Oh, I've been known to what my first draft to have someone in there with their name has been changed halfway through. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I don't even remember doing that. So, <laughs> but I mean, you know, it's, it's, you, I don't know. I just feel like we've got to find the way that works for us. And so when I write, I've, I've now figured out what works for me. So I just continue to do it that way. So there was literally no outlining. I said, oh, I want to write this down. I think that's a neat idea. Just, and it was just, I couldn't tell you exactly what the idea was because it was not formed at all. It could have been a phrase. It could have been someone's, you know, expression in the supermarket. It could have been anything. And I, I caught on to it and said, ah, I like that. It hit me a certain way. So I wrote, I started writing. Um, it, it's, it's, it's what works for me. I don't know. But again, I don't want, I don't want to say that to say, you know, someone looks and says, oh, I, I, I'm a pantser, but I, I pants differently. And now I'm making up a new word, but I do this differently. <laughs> um, and that's OK. It doesn't matter. I don't think we need to really label ourselves in terms of how we do that thing. I think that if, if no one ever asked me what my writing process is, you know, I might very well be an excited pantser because we were, you know, we were so it was so such a negative thing when I was coming up that I'm kind of a champion for pantsing now. Mm -hmm. But I think that outside of that, though, I don't know that people need to really worry about labeling how they produce, how they create. Just I mean, maybe we should just reverse it and start shaming people who plan. <laughs> no. You know? <laughs> I have been on panels with, it was, I've been on panels with people and you can see the way that it was being set up. It was like <laughs> me, the panzer and the seven plotters, you know, and I'm Oh, you have there. to plan your novella? Embarrassing. Oh, and I was just calm, but they were so serious. They were so serious. <laughs> I'm just like, I don't know. I don't know. I, listen, I don't know what to tell you, but I, and I don't, I, you know, it's, it used to be it used to be funny to me to get into these kinds of conversations with people because, you know, getting them fired up because I was completely and utterly relaxed and not worried that my story was going off in the wrong tangent because, frankly, I don't know what tangent it's supposed to go in. So whatever <laughs> way we're going is where we're going. And um, but now I just kind of feel like, you know, all right, do it your way. I'll do it mine. <laughs> well, well, we have a lot of we have a lot of pantsers in chat. Kate uh, Mariyama. Mm -hmm. you know, and Elizabeth uh, Broadbent, both pantsers. We have, it's a seat of the pants read for sure. The method works for the tension. And Eliza says, I feel this pro process talk so much organic all the way. So excellent. We're okay. winning. We're winning at That's least in this one. Yeah. That's a t-shirt. <laughs> I feel like pantsers or I, you could either describe them as organic or feral. <laughs> That's our spectrum. It depends. Is, are your pants dirty or clean really is how you go. Are your pants dirty or clean? That's yeah, a that's, tissue as well. I like that there one. There you go. See, we I like have that a, one quite a we bit. Can create a whole brand for pantsers. Absolutely. Um, okay, so uh, why don't you tell us, um, me and the audience included, a little about what 12 Hours is about, as spoiler free as possible, because it did just come out. Ah, that's so hard. That's like asking me to write the back cover copy. I and just... I've I've read it too. And somebody asked me, um, oh, what are you reading? And I was like, 12 hours. They're like, what is it about? I was like, I literally can't say anything because it would ruin it. So just read right. it. <laughs> it's a tight story, which I really, really like. I mean, there's not a lot of fat to trim from it. You know what I mean? It is, it's about 12 hours, put plainly. You know, I mean, it, it truly is. I mean, it, this, this cabbie, you know, he's taking a break. He's working overnight. Yeah, go ahead. The Oh, I was pointing. Look, broken glass. There's something sinister happening in this cab. Oh, yeah. Oh, I can't. I couldn't oh, see what was, you were pointing at. Oh, yeah. yeah. My finger kind of got cut off, but I'm pointing at the cab. Ooh, right. Ooh. I mean, he's he pulls over to, you know, do a really neat thing. He needs a minute. He wants to look at the sunrise. That sounds awesome, right? He's t driving overnight. And then all of a sudden, you know, he's, he sees the glass broken. He's pinned in his cab and he can't figure out what's going on. And he's just like what the devil is going on, you know, and you travel with him as he tries to figure out what happened when all he was trying to do was just get a second, you know, get a second and look at the sunrise and, you know, consider maybe I'll, maybe I get a cup of coffee. Oh, they're not open yet. You know, that kind of thing. 
and, and, and that sort of stream of consciousness approach to this story was exciting for me because the story doesn't take place outside of this cab. It's about him in the cab and what he's experiencing. So you're living the moment with him, which is a complete pantsing theory, as we well know. Now that I've explained pantsing to you, you know that that's fully that. Um, so it's, it is literally about this 12 hour block of time. And you're going to experience this 12 hour block of time with this specific cabbie. Now, what you come away with from that experience is different. You know, it's not going to be, it's not going to be everybody's 12 hours, if you will. It's, it's, it's his and, and yours if you go down that path with him. And it's, you know, it's not without its own challenges. I'll say that much, but it is. You know, I've read a stream of consciousness novel once way back when, and I thought that is the neatest concept because you can't, <laughs> you can't actually shake it. And when we think, you know, no one, and even if I sat and wrote down my thoughts right now, they wouldn't come out in the same way that they're in my head. I would clean them up unconsciously. I would clean up, you know, there'd be punctuation, there'd be you know, capitalization, there'd be, you know, whatever, whatever, however we change our wording when we try to present it to other people. So that would occur. So you're not necessarily living and understanding someone's thoughts, but in this, this novella, I think, I hope at least I've been able to capture this guy's thought process and what he's thinking and where he goes with it. That's why I keep saying the cabbie, because you don't think to yourself, I don't sit around going, you know, Oh, well, Marie, you, you know, as I think, you know, El Marie, you've got to sit down and write today or El Marie, you need to make sure that you're, you know, You've got water for the interview. I don't talk to myself by name. So it's just the 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 experience is is lived with him at that moment. And for me, that was just that was the fun of it. Um uh I hope I say their name right. Uh Kion, Kyan, like the spice baby, says, I loved how the unease carried so much weight. I just felt it in my bones as I read through. And Eliza says, you pulled it off. It's amazing. Like people should use it to teach stream of consciousness. Wow. Ooh. Oh my yeah. goodness, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> See, I'm Get blushing ready. now. And Get I, ready I, to my, blush. My whole face is hot. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's so awesome. <laughs> because I mean, as a writer... As a writer, like these are the things like I, you guys, oh my gosh, thank you. These are the things that we hope, like we want you to feel it. It can hurt. That's fine. We want, it can scare you. It can make you laugh. It can make you cry. We want you to have an emotional reaction. And if you don't, oh my gosh, I'm seeing a, a note just popped up. See, thank you so much for that, Sarah. It's it, it, that for me, that's always been my goal. You know, as I mentioned before, I mean, I, I came into this saying, hey, I want to get my words out there. You know, I mean, it's, I don't know. I, I don't know how to explain how exciting, invigorating, um, validating, you know, important those words are because we're, as authors, or at least as, as I'll just speak only for myself, then I am attempting to put my best work on the page every time. And I want to, but my best work isn't, oh, it was, a, you know, the, the, the monster was the scariest monster I've ever created. It is a more about this thing hit someone, <laughs> you know, this thing impacted them, made them think about it. Or if it's a, if it's one of my works where I'm actually trying to scare you, I want you to not, you know, be comfortable going upstairs in the dark. I want you to turn on your lights and be sure you're alone. And when you get in the bed, you know, I don't want you to just read it and say, oh, that was nice. And, and or, or eh, whatever. Yeah. I don't, if you don't, if it doesn't stick, then I might've missed my mark a little. So reading these comments and hearing the comments for you, reading them to me, that is, ah, that's awesome. So thanks for sharing <laughs> that because we don't always get to hear if it worked. <laughs> you know what and I, mean? I think, I think we can all agree authors we're tender egoed little creatures. <laughs> we are though. Well, and the thing at the same time though, is if it didn't hit, it didn't hit. I'll try again. I'll try again, you know, but if it does hit and, and you felt something, that's what I'm going for. So thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I know this is something I always wonder, and maybe the audience is too. Can you share some of the inspirations behind 12 hours? Like what does, what made you decide to write this? Like the 12 hour, you know, journey of the cabbie and like what transpires, of course, trying to keep it spoiler free as much mm -hmm. as possible. Well, I can definitely do that. I, okay. You know, 
the panther that I am, there is nothing that made me, I can't, I can tell you that I said, uh, I need to write something real short. Because I'm either a really, Check. really, really like a flash <laughs> fiction short, short story author or a novelist. You know, screenplays are a different animal entirely. But if I'm doing those two things, you know, you're talking about maybe up to 1500 words. And that's really that's often pushing it for me. I, I love that 800 word space, you know, 800 to 1200 words or like 80,000 words, 75,000, 80,000 words. So I don't have a lot of middle. So that was a, that's a hard marker to hit for me. But I said, I, I want to, I want to do something because, you know, there were just some, there were some opportunities coming up that I wanted to make sure that I was, you know, prepared for. Um, the idea that RJ Joseph was going to be editing this sort of amazing project I wanted to be ready if it was ever going to really happen. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it did really happen. So I was like, okay, I got to get ready. I wasn't ready when it happened, but I needed to get ready. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so I knew it needed to be short. I'm a psychological horror author. So I knew I wanted to stick to what I know on that one. I wanted to really, hopefully do a good job with what I can do. Um, because every night, you know, I, I talked a little bit earlier about, you know, moving into, mixing genres, cross genre work and things like that. And I really enjoy that. So sometimes I dip my toe into this mixing genre thing and it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. I'm having a great time with it, but I knew that if I were going to do something this short, I really wanted to try and do it in my, the genre that I claim, which is psychological horror. So that did come into mind. Um, and then I told you, I've read this one stream of consciousness thing mm -hmm. a long time ago. And I thought, one day I'm going to try that. Like, I'm really going to try that. And so when I said I need to write something short, psychological horror, you never did do that stream of consciousness thing. I thought, let me try it. Was it was a perfect mix. You know? And I just sat for a minute and thought, what would I do if? And there we go. Okay. Uh, what was the biggest challenge writing 12 hours? Keeping it short. I knew I write very tight. Sometimes, you know, my first edit is me actually adding five to 8,000 words to this thing. I don't know mm -hmm. what it's every single time. I just can't, I mean, I don't know why, but it's true. And um, I said to myself, keep it short, but then I, I, you know, I have this propensity for, like I said, I write novels. So I was thinking it needs to be, I kept warring with myself, keep it short, write more, keep it short, write more. No, it's not tight now. Well, all right. So I'll scale back. And then the scale back, I didn't have to, thank goodness, I stopped myself before I got to the end and then thought I was doing my, you know, my edit on the piece. So I had gotten it to where, it, closer to where it needed to be in terms of the length. But I wanted to, I wanted to make sure that I didn't water down this experience. But I wanted to make sure that I got every element of what I wanted in there, if that makes sense. Because I yeah. wanted to actually live those 12 hours with him, whatever the heck they were going to be for him. I wanted to live them with him, but I didn't want them to be bloated, if that makes any sense. So when I started to write as though I were writing a novel, I had to really scale myself back and say, this is supposed to be short. <laughs> and once I convinced myself that it needed to be that, I was like, I was fine. But that was a challenge early on. So but just about the first 2,000 words or so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The first 2,000 words were difficult to, to not let them be the sprawling, massive thing. And I'm like, no, no, no. Tighten it up a little bit more. So, yeah. Okay. Was... And last question. What do you hope readers will take away from the novella? That's a hard one. I know. I That's want why I saved to... it for last. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> I want them to be touched. Now, how they're touched is entirely up to them because there are a lot of different things you can take from this story. You know, there's uh, the, the, this story makes you dive into your own humanity quite a bit, you know, and so I can't say what you're going to walk away thinking at the end of it. Um, and I give you a whole lot of places to be as is the nature of psychological horror, you know? Um, but I want you to actually think about, Think about it, you know, live it with him and think, oh, but I, and put yourself in your, those shoes and not know you're doing it. So when you come away with the feeling that you come away with, it's authentic to you, which will be frightening. Sorry. 
<laughs> but it no, is like that's fair. <laughs> yeah but I mean that's the point right yeah well okay I'm curious audience if you want to share in chat let let us know what you ended up feeling after you've read it if you have because I know a few people were talking about having read it so let us know I'll read them as they come but um while uh, we've just finished up like the interview section. We're now going to do our first giveaway. Yay! Drums in chat. People who've come to Plim events know I like those drums. Let me <laughs> spin my wheel of names here. I wish you could hear it. It does like a little. Da -da 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 -da. And I guess that could be my drums. Thank you, Vaughn. Um... God, it really slowed down there. Uh, John Lawson, are you here? Let me check. John Lawson. Du, 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 du. Oh, I see you in chat. John, are you here? Are you excited to win a signed copy of 12 Hours? Maybe? I see you in the guest. I'll reach out to you after. Oh, yes. Whoever, uh, there'll be three winners tonight. Signed paperback copies of 12 Hours. I'll be reaching out Um with afterwards with the email that you registered for and that's how I'll get your shipping addresses so we can send you those books yay oh hello John congrats you've won a copy hey let me make sure to note down your name Ta -ta -ta -ta. sorry for my really loud keyboard if you ever see me muting during events it's because I'm usually typing something really fast maybe in chat so I'll share the link again. Uh, if you want to follow Elle Marie Wood anywhere, that's her website, Twitter, and Facebook, as well as a link to 12 Hours at on the Raw Dog Screaming website as well, in case you don't win or you don't have a copy yet. All right. Now, this is probably the, the part of the event that everyone has been waiting for because we all love live readings. So uh, thank you again for... Um, agreeing to do a live reading. Everyone loves live readings. Um, and you said you're reading the first chapter of 12 hours, correct? I am. Yes. Amazing. Oh, um, Kayan says, I think I went through several emotions, but I think what I felt was most felt was something between fear and unease. Although that's exactly what I want to feel when I read horror. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Excellent. I love that word unease. Like that's like the best word. Um, and then Eliza did also uh, uh, say as well, I was scraped out when I finished that book. The cabbie was beautiful and heartbreaking and raging and tender all at once. I was grateful to go on his journey. And then Kate says, I was wrecked in the best ways at the end of the book. Just lovely. This cabbie really took my heart and the ending was so satisfying. Sarah says, it made me feel a little suffocated while everyone was talking around him like he was invisible. Mm -hmm. We're going to make you cry right before you read. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I'm like, you guys, what? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> oh, man. No, that's such an awesome comment, though, about just feeling like, you know, it, it, it's and I don't not, not to give a spoiler, but that was well said, Sarah. I mean, it just, they were just chatting like, and he was just, oh, I can't say much because I'm like going to give it away. I don't want to give it away. But it was, yeah, that's a great description. Great Absolutely. description. Absolutely. I mean, if you're curious what Sarah means, just get a copy. Right. There's that. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, take it away. Okay. All right. Oh, but can I say something really quickly? Oh, though? I mean, I love, of course, we talked about the yeah, cover. The but cover, beautiful. I am loving the eyes. Oh yeah, I love that. I'm loving the eyes because if you ever, if you go to my my author, uh, oh gosh, it's everywhere. If you go to my author page on uh, Facebook, if you go to my website, elmariewood.com, I'm always with the eyes. I'm always like looking. I like my eyes. I don't know. I took this really cool picture once, and it was like the neatest like angle, and I use it as a bookmark, and I actually. It's just my eyes on it. So that we use, these are not my eyes in here, but if that we use someone's eyes, it's fantastic. Amazing. Yep. All righty, then I'll just begin. Bloodshot eyes. Oh, wow. I didn't realize I'm talking about eyes and the first thing I said were. <laughs> it was so <laughs> well, Let's start again. Bloodshot eyes stare at me curiously, peering out one of those ski masks that cover your whole face. It wasn't cold enough for that kind of thing. I don't even think I've, e I've ever seen one of those out in stores around here. Must have bought it online. Just black, no design, no pattern, nothing to remember, just black. 
The eyes are black too. Is it a girl? A guy? I don't know. Thin shoulders, knobby, even through the jacket, like clothes hanging off a skeleton. That's a weird ass thing to think of, but that's what it seemed like. I could hear myself grunting with effort, but it didn't really sound like a grunt, at least not the way I sound when I grunt. But then again, how many times do I listen to myself grunting anyway? Lifting the sofa when we moved? That shit was a bitch to get in the house. I grunted then, I'm sure I did. In bed with Janet? Yeah, maybe, especially when she moves her hips like that, catching me the way she does, yeah, for sure. But anyway, I know I've heard that sound of my own grunt before, so I should know the difference between that and whatever this whining, hissing, gargling thing coming out of my throat was. All I'm trying to do is pick my arms up, for Christ's sake, hold on to their waist. I just want to know if I got a girl or a boy straddling me, staring at me with those ugly eyes. Hard eyes. The skin around them rugged, lined and weathered. Not old, but still. Drugs? Maybe. Drink? Maybe that too. Hard eyes. Hard life. Outside the cab, busting my window, those hard-assed eyes. Looking in as they crack splinters, flowers across the whole thing from the diamond they made in the corner. Piece of loose cement, maybe. That'd do the trick. Hit the corner just right, make a spider's web with all the noise. They'll be pissed when I bring that cab back to the garage with a busted window. Fuck! They'll probably take it out of my pay, the bastards. That's bullshit because I never smoke in my car, never eaten it either. I vacuum it, wipe it down like it's my own. If they screw me on this, I'm going to be pissed. Goddamn Larry will be more than happy to take it out of my pay. I'll probably count the shit right out in front of me so I can see every bill. Fuck, I can't afford this. Not this month. Books ain't cheap and Melina will, Melina will need money for them soon. And Karen's chemo. Fuck. Running away now, little pricks. Dudes, definitely dudes, both of them, maybe. Fucking robbed me. I never saw them coming. What the fuck? How did they get in the car anyway? What the hell was one of them doing on top of me? Did I? No. No, I'm not that fucking lonely, no. So what the hell was he doing on me like that? How had he gotten in the car in the first place? And what the fuck was he looking at? The way he stared at me, it was like he was studying me. And there had, and there, and where had the other one been the whole time? Had he been staring at me from the back seat of the car? Was he beating off back there watching whatever the hell was going on in front? That grunting again, more like a moan, a hissing moan, airy, weak. Is it coming from me? Am I making that sound? God damn it, I wasn't even asleep. A minute ago, I was just pulling over to take a break. The city looked different at night. There used to be a song on the radio about that, about how people were different at night. And it's the God honest truth. Dark isn't just dark, it's fucking black, like the color. And it's like ink and water, it coats everything. And if it touches you, you feel like you'll never get it off. Same street every night, but different every time. I hate it and I love it. The homeless man and his cat sharing a can of food. The whore with a fresh black eye and busted lip and the John Payne to get her to take care of him in the alley regardless. It's all bullshit, but there's harmony. I hate that I know that. I hate that I feel that, and I know I'm part of it. So I hate that too. I pulled over, so fucking what? I was thinking about getting coffee over at Sal's and maybe catching the tail end of the sunrise. Sometimes we did that, us creatures of the night. Talked together as the sun peeked out from behind the buildings. I thought I wanted that today especially after some drunk bastard stiffed me and somebody else left a dirty diaper in my car. A break didn't sound like too much to ask after a shift like that. So I pulled over, sue me. I should have gotten the coffee first, but then I said, fuck it. Maybe I'll take a little taste of something better. Just a little sip before getting back out there. Not everyone, not even enough to warm my stomach, just enough to coat my lips. I can feel my tongue poking around in my mouth, looking for what was left of that nip 
that spice, that little something, something I kept in the glove box, but there wasn't anything. Damn, I didn't even get any of that before they jumped me. I reached for the glove compartment to get it now because damn, if I don't deserve it after all this, but I didn't get there. I try again. I can see the glove, glove compartment. I'm looking right at the fucker when I reach for it the third time, but nothing moves. Running away like a little bitch. <clears throat> Running away with his friends <clears throat> after they stole all my shit. What paralyzed me? I lift my hand again toward the steering wheel this time, toward where I'd felt him on my lap. Cold. My pants. My legs through the pants were cold. Did he pee on me? Was he so excited, staring like that in my eyes that he peed, leaving me there to watch him run out of my broken window? I yell, pissed off by the idea, and damn, it was so loud. I thought I might bust my eardrums. I turn my head to the side, but I can't see anything that should be over there. The entrance to the alley, the back door to the store, only what's straight ahead because I didn't move. I yell again, fucking belt out a barrage of curses that would have made my mama get a bar of soap from my mouth, but they just bounce around in my head. No, I wouldn't bust my eardrums because I was hearing everything from the inside. It was loud, louder than anything I'd ever heard before, but it was all inside me. The junkie sleeping it off behind the mountain of trash near the burned out building at the other end of the alley wouldn't have been able to hear me, even if he were stone soul sober, sober and standing right outside my car door because I wasn't making a fucking sound. Did they paralyze me? Cut my vocal cords or something? Slit my throat? They didn't even get enough for the effort. Bears have been few and far between tonight. I hope that pisses them off. I hope when they go to their hideout and go through the pouch with tonight's take in it, they see how none of it amounts to shit. I hope they get pissed and start to fight each other, one blaming the other for the dirt they both did. When the cops come for me, I don't know how to identify them. They're just two wiry dudes, one of them with dead eyes, wearing a black mask, but I'll do the best I can, anything to send those pricks away. Sal is probably opening the corner store I can see the light changing the color of the sky. Damn, I should have gotten that coffee. I could use a taste of that right now. 6.32 a.m. and not a minute sooner, bringing orange and purples to the sky, pushing out the night. Hallelujah. Thank you, ma'am. Good riddance. That's Yay, thank, you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I have to tell you, reading curses and, and certain words out loud is really difficult. But... <laughs> I didn't write them, but oh gosh, when it comes to reading them. Anyway. <laughs> uh, so Sarah says that was great. Kate says these life details are what bring the cabbie to life. We got some claps from Adam. Thank you. Thank you. Now, uh, before we jump in, now everyone start thinking of your questions for the Q&A section. I'll do the second giveaway. So everyone give me drums too, but also think of questions. Do both at the same time somehow. Manage it. Okay, let's hit my magical wheel. Like how many times is the F word in here? I don't, I don't know. If that's a question. A lot. The first chapter yeah. might be 15. I don't know. Quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> just control F it. <laughs> Listen, I can't. I just, I can't. But you know, the <laughs> thing about it is with cursing, I feel like you can't. If someone did that to me, I would have said every one of those curses. So <laughs> that no, that's sense. fair. Absolutely. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, our winner this time, uh, Vaughn Jackson. Vaughn Jackson. Jackson. Ugh. Are you here, Vaughn? And hopefully I'm saying her name right. <laughs> oh, hello. Congrats. Um, again, hello. I will reach out to the winners after the event with the email that you use to register and get your shipping details. So congrats. All right. Again, I'm going to post these socials. Okay. Now it's time for the Q&A. We'll do a little Q&A session. And then right after I'll do the very last giveaway. So you do have to stick to the end if you want that chance. Um, so I'll 
I will kick it off. Um, how many times did you use the word F bomb in your book? Just I don't kidding. Know. <laughs> <laughs> A Just lot. Kidding. I mean, honestly, though, I felt like because I felt every one of them when I had to read them out loud just now. And I'm like, oh, no. Oh, well, God, you no. Always, oh, I my face heard... is so incredibly warm. Oh, my because, God. <laughs> holy moly. But yeah, I mean, at least I don't know. But the fact like I was just saying. There's profanity, right? But yeah. then, and you wouldn't sometimes when I'm teaching my students, I say you would not stub your toe and go, oh my goodness, no, that really smells. You <laughs> oh, would never heck. <laughs> you would never do that. You know, that especially if you were alone and you did this. No one's here to see. And your you mom's not words. there with the bar of soap. You know, she isn't ready for it. Right. And so you would say those things and, and just imagine being immobilized like that. And you've got, you know, this, these moments of what is going on right now. You would absolutely in your head, if nowhere else, say these words. And remember, we're in this guy's head. So, yeah, <laughs> well, I, I do find it interesting because I don't know if you've heard this a lot, but oftentimes I see this in writing circles where an author will be critiqued for using um, like curse words too often. Mm -hmm. So it's just interesting because this is a good example of how they can be effectively used. Because obviously there are some stories that you can use them too often. Sure, sure. Um, but I, I, I thought this was a good example of how, because it's very authentic. Like in my head, I say it all the time. <laughs> mm. Oh, and, and you just have to think, I mean, you can't, no one, well, you shouldn't just walk around cursing with any every other, you know, every other sentence has some foul language in it and just out in the world, you know, I, that's, that's also just not, I don't know. That's just for me. I don't, you can see how I've reacted over having to read my own curse words written, written down. So I clearly don't walk around just cussing all day, <laughs> but if your character would curse about this thing, then you need to have the character curse about it. If they are someone who would not, then you don't have them curse about it. You've just got to write characters that are real. And this is how you get to the reality, a real textured character. You have to have them speak in a way that they would speak. You know, um, I don't know. I mean, that's really the, the long and short of it. You've got to make your characters real. And the only way to do that is to sort of live through them and have them express themselves the way that they should given how you know what their character arc is absolutely okay we have a question from kate okay. what is your craziest cab ride story in real life <laughs> oh my um i had to think back to that uh this is a funny one so we went <laughs> the kids and I, I mean, this is not even like, this was, we were in Italy, we were in Rome and we, so we went to the Coliseum and we were taking the cab, I thought, to Trevi, to Trevi Fountain. And we just ended up getting off the, just long story short, we got out of the cab and I, we took the train, but I thought we were going to Trevi Fountain, right? And it just, I don't know what was happening. It was like back alleys and just a whole bunch of, I started feeling like I was in a, like in Mission Impossible movies because we were flying behind some truck and then there was a guy on a bike who flew past us and everybody's going too fast, especially in like this little alley and he's cursing in Italian or he's yelling in Italian. <laughs> I'm going to assume it was a curse. And I'm in the car with young kids. <laughs> I'm like, what, 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 the, why are we back here? Are we going to Trevor Fountain? Like what? <laughs> What is this? And I just kept thinking, even if this is the shortcut, I don't want it. I want to get out of this. And so we're just flying, flying, flying. I made some excuse. Like, you know what? Just want to take the train. Just let us off at the next train well, stop. We want the train, actually. Never mind. <laughs> no, it's okay. Thank you so much. Just let me you know. I never got out of a cab faster in my life because I was just like, why are we racing? What is, what are we chasing? Who's chasing us? Why is everybody going <laughs> fast? This is an alley. This truck in the front isn't going as fast as us. Anybody else see it but me? And I'm just thinking, I don't want to be here. I want to get out of this. So that was the strangest. It's not like, well, it could have been dangerous. I don't know. Hmm. But it was memorable because that was like man that was like six years ago or something seven maybe <laughs> and i still i'll never forget that mm, uh, that was wonderful. 
Eliza says Roman cab drivers are insanity. I had to close my eyes every time. So she has similar experiences. Not just me then. Thank goodness. Because I just kept yeah. thinking, what are we doing back here in an alley? And this isn't a regular alley because people are flying in here. And I, just was, <laughs> I just felt like this is not, this isn't even the way to Cherry Fountain. Let me out, please. <laughs> and Eliza did have a question. Okay. How, how do you feel about the cabbie character? Mm. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. yeah. I I like him because I think that he's real. I think that people are complex and there's always so many nuances to, you know, individuals. And we never know. We never know. You go to the store, you go to the gas station, you go to whatever you're going to, and you talk to someone, you can even have a full on conversation with them. But you have no idea what home they just left, what experience they just had, what they're going to go do later. You know, the decisions and choices they've made. And they don't know that about you. So the thing that we look at and we judge and we say, oh, we like or don't like, these are only the pieces that we know, the complexities that, you know, that make up every individual, we never get to see. We never get to see someone's thought process before they do something because they could be thinking, you know, I'm not going to do this. I'm just not going to do this next. And they get right in front of wherever they are and they do it anyway then they've got to live with whatever that decision is. And again, that's not something we see. So I like him. I felt for him all the way through because he's just a regular human who has made good choices and bad and is in this one moment that, you know, we're just happy to have the chance to peek in on. Absolutely. Now we're running up on time. So I'm going to ask my final question, which I always ask my authors on these launch events. What are you working on now? Can you share the details? I can. I am editing the fifth book of this. I never expected to write a series that was five Ooh. books long, ever, ever, ever. But I'm editing the fifth and final book, which is exciting. Um, it's a, uh, it's what I talked earlier about cross genre and all that kind of stuff. It's one of those mixes and it's got like romance and horror and um, science fiction, which was like, really? Ooh. I'm doing that? I guess I'm doing that. You know, a little bit of fantasy. It's it's it was a neat story and it turned into this five book saga and I'm editing that now and I'm I am excited. I'm also kind of sad to say goodbye to the characters because, you know, I've kind of lived with them for a while, but um, it's invigorating because my first edit is almost is, is like a plotter's rewrite. You know, when they go in and they revise and they add it, that's my first edit. So. I'm in that stage where I've got just nothing but red all over my pages. And if I'm excited by the red, because that means I'm adding words and I'm fleshing something out or I'm exploring some other angle. I mean, red on a paper for me is fantastic. As long as I put it there. When my editors, put it there, <laughs> I'm like, this is, you know, how much, how much red can you possibly have? But, you know, <laughs> and so it's, it's, it's exciting. And that's where I am. Um, boy, What's oh boy, the, the next again? writing, say again. What's the series called? The series is called, well, I just changed it interestingly enough. Oh, okay. I changed the name. So it's Books of the Forbidden, which is like, okay. And people can <laughs> find it on your website if they want to? Not yet. No, Not all yet. Okay. five of them are complete. Well, and I'm working on the last edit. And then, you know, hopefully soon you'll see it, you know, knock on wood. Hopefully on wood. soon you'll see, you know, the first title out there. Somewhere. Okay. But not yet. So it's not, you will not, you'll just remember you heard me say it. Absolutely. <laughs> and when I start talking about this thing that has a whole bunch of elements, you won't be surprised. You'll have said, oh, I heard about that. Mm -hmm. And uh, you are going to continue with something else you're working on for writing? Oh, side yeah, I, I'm yeah. going to be moving to my next writing project right out at the on the heels of this edit, which is just the way I like to roll right into the next thing. And um, I'm considering a cozy mystery series, Ooh. which is unique for me because, I, like I said, I'm a psychological horror author and I usually stay in that place. But the beauty of psychological horror is that it straddles the the edge of everything. You know, you can kind of dip your toe into suspense, suspense and thriller and mystery and all the different genres, which is really nice. And so, you know, having that purview, I've just decided maybe I'll try to try some mystery out for a while. Like I did the romance in that story I just told you about. That was fun too. That's not something I usually dabble in, but it was something that, you know, it's, it's an easy stretch coming from a psychological horror perch. So that would be fun. Uh, the book one of that's already out, which but I thought it was a standalone when I wrote it, but I'm finding that it might not be. It might be the beginning of a cozy 
mystery series. Okay. What's so. the first uh what's the first book called? It's called Mars, the Band Man and Sarah Sue. Okay. So feel free to check that out if you're interested. Mm -hmm. You'll yep, you'll see the re-release of that coming in uh, April. Ooh, congrats. That's always exciting. Thank you. Okay, it is time for the final giveaway. Drums, everyone. Super fun. Okay, let's see. Here it goes again. The wheel. Can you see it in my glasses? Oh, you can. Look, there's the wheel. I can't read anything through your glasses. I, yeah. I, I was looking. <laughs> oh, oh, uh, Kyan uh, Barton. Every time I say your name, I get scared. <laughs> Kyan <laughs> Martin, congrats. Are you still here? You are. Congrats. So those are our three winners. Again, I'll be reaching out to you via email after the event. And thank you everyone for coming. And thank you, Elle Marie Wood, for letting me host your book launch party for 12 hours out now. <laughs> thank you so much for doing it. It was okay. wonderful. Oh, my head's gone. <laughs> I can do, oh, I, I have it here. Oh yes, yeah, so that, that works a little better. <laughs> no, but that background is so cool. I don't, I can never make those work for me, so. Oh, um. Uh, yeah, it's usually, well, we don't have to talk tech right now. <laughs> okay, so everyone. okay, thank you again. And good luck on your next project. I love Cozy Mysteries myself, so I know I'm going to be checking it out. <laughs> oh, cool. thank you. Okay. <laughs> and remember, if uh, anyone has missed it that you think might be interested, keep an eye out on our socials. I'll be sharing the link once it up. it's up on my YouTube channel, Plim Talks. So you'll okay. get to hear the reading again if you want to. All right. And the Everyone. red face that happens afterwards. Yeah. Sure. Well, it matches my hair, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I probably got to that shade, I bet. See, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you, everyone. And thank you for spending your Monday night with us. Thank you so much, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye.